Yeah, I think, well, it's being aware of your triggers as well. I mean, as some of us may not be aware of them. I think I feel I'm more aware of others' fatigue triggers than my fatigue triggers because I guess we're constantly going back through in our head, I'm okay, I'm safe to wind the window down, I'll be okay. Um, so, yeah, being aware of those um, and how it's impacting your driving and whether you need to pull over or do something I think is really important. But the first step is to sort of understand what they are. Yeah, I think you make an interesting point, Amanda, um, about the passenger and saying, I see fatigue in other drivers and I don't see it in myself. I don't think we kind of tap into that enough. So with alcohol, again, if you see somebody and they're, they're clearly drunk, you would never get in a car with them. But how many people truly ask themselves, is this driver safe to be driving me? It's four o'clock in the morning. We've all been out all night. I've got a designated driver. Therefore, it's okay. I'm safe because they've not been drinking. Um, and so I don't think people are thinking, can I get into the car with this driver because of fatigue? Well, was something that, that, that I'm, I'm really enjoying that's coming out um, is, is our mood uh, and then how we feel when we're driving and, you know, having less tolerance to road users because anger and aggression itself is a road safety risk uh, and, and, and something that we'll touch upon later that's come through with the campaigns that the NRSPP has done is that all of these road safety risks that we have, they all kind of combine together uh, and fatigue can underline, as we said, distraction or anger and aggression. And I think often when we get in the car, we, we kind of assume that we leave all our, our stresses and our feelings behind us, like we shut the door on that and then the drive is siloed but the drive isn't really siloed because however we're feeling and what's going on in our mind is traveling with us and so we drive as we feel we react as we feel so when we're tired and we're more prone to being angry or aggressive we're probably going to see that other drivers are getting in our way more or they're, they're trying to provoke us more but we don't leave all of that in the car either. And I think that's what's really fascinating. If we have a, a really hard drive, you know, there's a lot of kind of interactions with other road users, then when we get to work, we can tend to be a bit angrier and more aggressive with our colleagues. Um, we get back in the car, we're still more angry and aggressive and that can affect our, our family time as well. So these drives aren't siloed, they're part of our day. And, and as Jerome once said, which I love, you know, driving is often how we start and end our day or what we do during it. And that leaks into everything else that we do. So, so it's part of it. It can be part of a bigger problem. It can really affect our day.